and blessings to you all. I am Gary Liker, the pastor of the Christ in Stanton United Methodist Churches. It is a joy to be with you as we worship our Lord today. For those of you who tune into these online recordings uh, on a regular or a semi-regular basis, I want wanted to let you know that we will be taking a break from doing these recordings through the rest of June. Our editing and production staff have some vacation planned and we want to recognize and honor that time off. All who are involved have done a great job with our recordings and deserve a bit of a break. We will pick up the recordings again in July, so stay tuned uh, via the emails that I send out uh, to find out when we'll be back online. As a reminder, the Christ Church worships at 9 a.m. on Sundays and the Stanton Church worships at 1015, so feel free to come and worship with us in person at either church. All are welcome. Our scripture reading for today uh, comes to us from the Gospel of Mark. It is Mark chapter 3, verses 20 through 35. And the crowd came together again so that they could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him. For people were saying, he has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, he has Beelzebub, and by the ruler of the demons he casts out demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand. But his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed, the house can be plundered. Truly, I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins, and whatever blasphemes they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiven forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, He has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now let us pray. Holy Lord, we thank you for this time to worship you. Open our hearts, open our ears to hear your message this day. Amen. So again, uh, greetings uh, to all of you. You know, it was and still is uh, difficult for people to recognize who Jesus really is. According to the gospel reading from Mark, Jesus' own family even struggled with this. Rather than seeing him as the true Son of God, who was doing good, who was healing the sick, who was freeing those possessed by evil spirits, Jesus' mother and siblings actually see him as a deranged son and brother, one who had gone off the deep end, embarrassing and humiliating the good family name and needing to be taken home. 
the religious leaders, the scribes, who had been taught to recognize the Messiah when he came, had a similar problem. They looked at Jesus and thought that they saw Satan himself instead. He has Beelzebub, and by the ruler of the demons, he casts out demons, they said. We might say that Jesus' family and the scribes had reason to not believe that the one before them was the Son of God. After all, they had not yet known the full glory of Jesus. They were witnesses of Jesus' miracle. They were hearers of his wonderful teachings, but they had not experienced Jesus' death and resurrection, nor had been filled with the Holy Spirit. So, so far they knew Jesus only in part. So can we blame them for not recognizing who Jesus was fully? So it may be too early in the story of Jesus to blame his family and the scribes for not recognizing him. But having said that, what about us? We know the full story. We know Jesus' teachings. We know of his miracles. And we know of his sacrifice for our redemption. We know of his crucifixion, his death, and his resurrection. We know of the outpouring of his spirit and the building up of his church. We do. We know. But do we believe? It is in believing that we are able to recognize and fully know Jesus. It is hard to believe in Jesus, though, when everything he does and teaches seems so contrary to the way things are, especially in our society today. It wasn't just some simple thing that Jesus had done to have his family and the scribes think that he was a crazy man working for Satan. Matthew and Luke fill in the rest of the story for us. Jesus had cast out a demon that had made a man mute. And when the demon had left, the man spoke. The crowd saw what Jesus had done and was amazed and said, Never has anything like this been seen in Israel. The, the man experienced the healing touch of Jesus. Who would have believed that a healing like this could happen? That this man's life would be forever changed and that a new life and peace could be lived. This man knew that Jesus made it possible and it became reality in his life. But then, of course, there were the others. It was the scribes who thought the man who was free to the demon and Jesus who had healed him, well, they thought it was impossible. Jesus must somehow be deceiving them and therefore must be a cruel and evil man. However, they ignored another possibility, that what they had seen occur before them was nothing less than divine intervention. They didn't think of that. In their efforts to be responsible spiritual leaders, the scribes had forgotten their faith, which claimed that with God, all things are possible. This is how much God loved the world. He gave his son, his one and only son, and this is why so that no one need be destroyed. By believing in him, anyone can have a whole and lasting life. God didn't go to all the trouble of sending his son merely to point an accusing finger, telling the world how bad it was. He came to help, to put the world right again. Unfortunately, at that moment, it appears that the scribes were without hope. They were without hope, not because they lacked knowledge or understanding, nor because they were bad men. They were without hope because when God intervened in their lives and in the lives of people all around them through Jesus, they turned and rejected him. They rejected Jesus by 
doing the most illogical thing, calling Jesus evil, rather than seeing the divine good in him and his actions. They refused to acknowledge that the one before them held the very Spirit of God. They condemned themselves because their hearts and their minds were closed to Jesus, the only source of eternal salvation. Now, we do not know the final outcome of those scribes' faith journeys. We do catch glimpses of Jesus' mother, Mary, at the foot of the cross. Perhaps in time, they all came to believe in Jesus as the Savior of their lives, joining him in doing the will of God and thus becoming part of Jesus' true family. But I ask again, what about us? Do we recognize him for who he truly is? Are we part of the true family of God? May our merciful Lord touch our lives. May we recognize him. And may we welcome his goodness, his forgiveness, his love, as we follow our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as part of the beloved family of God. And now, my friends, let us pray. Holy Lord, we all have been throughout our lives part of families, and we know that um, we all have had experiences with our family, sometimes good, sometimes bad. You invite us to be part of your family, to put our faith and trust and love in you. That no matter how we have lived our lives within our own families, we are always welcome to be a part of yours. And so, Lord, we open our hearts, we open our very souls, our very lives to you. And we enter into being part of your holy family. Oh, Lord, continue to love us. Grant us your grace. Show us your peace. As we are part of your holy family. In your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Peace and blessings. Amen. Amen.